We're back. It's time to review the burr part. We've done woo, white, blue. Now it's time for burr, black, red. Arrogant poet one and a black. Whenever arrogant poet attacks, you may pay two life. You do it gains flying till end of turn. No, 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 zero. Not good. This is an acceptable uh, piece in uh, limited because a two one on two is fine in terms of its damage. And then you can start making it fly for that extra little bit of DPS. Baleful Mastery. Baleful is an absolute only shows up in Magic the Gathering context kind of word. No one would describe working with their leasing agent as baleful. Three and a black for an instant. You may pay a little bit rather than pay a spell's mana cost. If this was paid, an opponent draws a card. <gasps> Exile target creature or planeswalker. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so this is a three mana exile creature planeswalker. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Uh, I'm actually going to give this a four out of five in constructed. Four out of five in constructed. There's a lot of really cheap strong removal in black, but the fact that this is instant speed exhalation is very, very nice. Also, there's often situations in which you might want to just do this on turn two. For instance, if you are dealing with a hallowful fountain blade. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think that like playing this for, for two or for four, I can see a lot of the situations, but really I, I would give this, I'd give this like a four out of five. I really liked Vraska's Contempt. I really liked Vraska's Contempt. We do have Eat to Extinction uh, in the in the set, but I think that when we when rotation comes, this is the kind of card that I'd be really interested in. That I'd be really interested in, and also the fact that you can pay two um, is really nice. Brackish Trudge, Brackish, another. I read Tolkien as a kid, and I am a hobbyist author. And things are brackish in my novel. Two and a black for a fungus beast. Hey, that's us. That's who we are. I've become one of those since March of last year. Brackish Trudge enters the battlefield tapped. It's a 4-2. Shit. Return Brackish Trudge from your graveyard to your hand. Activate only if you gain life this turn. There's that 4-2 hybrid Golgari nerd... That, like, if you gain life, it actually goes straight to the battlefield. So this Brackish Trudge is a slower nerd, and therefore sucks, and therefore is bad, and we don't like. Zero out of five constructed, but I can see some, some real merit to the recursion. Callous Blood Mage. I had this card as part of my review, and I thought it was good. This is the only card that I've looked at uh, before today. This is the only card that I know. And I think that this card is quite good. This is a constructed, playable, excellent card. So first of all, it's a Tormod's Crypt with a Body. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Look at the bottom one. Exile target player's graveyard. Very nice. Also, you draw a card and you lose a life. That's one that you can do. That seems pretty, pretty cool. Uh, Quantum Strides says, what's that on his shoulder? Oh, that's Sheriff. That's me. That's me in the uh, image. This is how I see myself when I do these set reviews. Where I'm like, yeah. And then there's there's Sheriff right up there on top of her castle. Um, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, you gain one life. I want to see more of this uh, black and green pest, pestilence, pesty stuff. Um, but frankly, a 2-1 that draws a card and loses you a life. Uh, what's the name of that card that does that? Something Legion Zealot. You know what I'm talking about? Something Legion Zealot is 1-1 one, one. when it enters the battlefield, you lose life and draw a card. Dusk Legion Zealot, there we go. Bam, got it before chat did. Woo! Um, the big reason I think Cal's Blood Mage is good is it's enter the battlefield, exile target player's um, graveyard. That's just a good effect. Uh, and so for that reason, I'm gonna give this, I'd probably give it a four out of five, three out of five from Constructed. Um, I think that the draw a card and lose a life is kind of like a circumstantial um, against control kind of throw down. I also think that the um, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token is sort of like a circumstantial oops I'm up against an aggro list and I'm trying to stay alive, create a blocker, gain a little bit of life. 
Um, so so yeah, I I, I I like this card quite a bit. Confront the past. Uh-oh, it's a lesson. X and black. Choose one. Return target Planeswalker card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Remove twice X loyalty counters from target Planeswalker and opponent controls. Is Elder Spell in? I think Elder Spell is out. Who, who am I? <laughs> um, now this is a lesson, so it can come from the side. It can come from the side. This is the first lesson I'm looking at that I'm like, hey, this is actually pretty good. Because remember, lessons you don't run in your deck. You run learn cards, and then the lessons come from the side. Um, return Planeswalker with man value X or less. Depending upon some of the learn cards, I actually like this. I'm actually going to put this as a 4 out of 5. Now again, why would I put this as a 4 out of 5? Because you have to remember that lesson cards are not cards you run in the main deck. You don't run it in the main deck. You run a learn card in the main deck and peel a lesson from the side. So again, Stomp is not a very good spell on its own. 2 mana to deal 2 damage? Eh. It's the fact that it's attached to a Bone Crusher that's good. Okay, which is it? Can we put lessons in main or no? You absolutely can put it in the main deck. Superlatively, you can. Um, so, so I think the fact that if there is a middling learn card, and this is the lesson payoff, I feel like it's going to be better than we think. So I'm going to give this a four out of five and construct it. My first controversial opinion. Whoa, crushing disappointment. Oh, ho, 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 ho. guess which one's me, and guess which one's you. Three and a black for each player loses two life. You draw two cards. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Get hurt a little bit. And then I learn a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Computer show me 2020. Yeah, if I lay on Twitch. Yeah, it's been a rough one. It's been a rough one. Um. Uh. Are there very many good instant speed draw two card spells in black? Are, are there... Like... I kind of... Dark Bargain? What's Dark Bargain do, man? Dark Bargain. Dark Bargain MTG, okay. Look at the top. Oh, God. Get out of here with your cookie stuff, man. Dark bargain. Look at the top three cards. Put two of them in your hand. Um, yeah, I guess I guess this card sucks, but I don't know. I kind of like it. I'll probably try to run it in a mono-black list and become disappointed. <laughs> Essence Infusion, one in a black. Put two plus and plus encounters on target creature. It gains lifelink until end of turn. Oh, it's a limited card. With a very cool-looking squiggle lizard. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. See, this is me, and this is you, and this is what it feels like when I talk to you, right? Isn't it just horrifying? Ugh. I twitch. Ah. Oh. A flying 1-1. One, one. When it dies, learn. <laughs> this is a fun little card. This is a fun little card. I like I twitch. I like I twitch. Hey, all right. I twitch. Therefore, I am. Um, I I rate this as a non-zero number. I'm going to give this like a two. Because this is kind of interesting, right? It's a 1-1 one, one flyer. It pecks, it pokes, it blocks, it yokes. You can learn some good stuff from the side. Oh, that's pretty nice. Um, yeah, no, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I might even go so far as to give this a one out of five in Constructed. Because I think this can do stuff. Flunk. Ooh. Oh, they used a one-syllable word. Flunk. One in a black. Tar creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is seven minus the number of cards in that creature's controller's hand. <laughs> By the way, creature's controller's hand um, is precisely what makes people go, magic is too wordy. Flunk. Seven minus the number of cards in that creature's controller's hand. Wow. That's a 5 out of 5. 
This card's unbelievable. This card's unbelievable. This card is dis disgusting. Disgusting. It's obviously a black card that is good against aggro lists. Straight up. Very good against all this indestructibility bullshit. Season Halloblade is out of here. Let me tell you, White Weenie is dead. White Weenie's it. White Weenie's just gone. Gone, 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 gone. So, in theory, this is a two mana, like, often minus three, minus three, minus four, minus four. Yeah, Flunk is, I mean, it's just an incredible card. It's incredible, incredible, incredible. And, like, I know that it's kind of more sideboardy than mainboardy. But... It's so good in the sideboard, I gotta give it a 5 out of 5, right? This is like duress. The card's insane. Go blank. Two and a black. Oh, this is actually such exquisite art where it kind of like fades out into sketchiness. Oh, yeah. Target player discards two cards, then exile all cards from that player's graveyard. Holy shit. Mind Rot is just in ruin. Oh my god, whoever does art for Mind Rot again is going to be like, why, why, why can't I work on a go blank? Whoa! Exiling graveyards is excellent. It's a good Mind Rot. Wow, holy shit. Uh, the card still sucks ass. It's not good. It's not good enough. Um, maybe as a sideboard card, maybe as a 1 out of 5 sideboard graveyard hating, you know, like, I make you discard and then I exile your whole graveyard because fuck you. Maybe that's what it is, but, like, I don't know. I, Mind Rot was never really that great. It was never really that excellent. Yeah. I just, Hunt for Specimens, one in a black. Create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token. Learn! I have no idea if there's that many good uh, black learn cards. Sorcery Speed, seems bad, seems terrible, seems like a 0 out of 5. Lash of Malice. Oh, my God, look at that inky spear. Oh my gosh, so inky. Oh, ooh. Also, that Street Fighter 4 runoff. Look at that. One black target creature gets plus two, minus two until end of turn. <gasps> five out of five. Holy. What? Five out of five. Holy shit. It's, um, Disfigure. It's Disfigure. Oh my god, it's a 5 out of 5. It's amazing. By the way, I'm looking at instant speed minus 2. Oh, season Hallow Blade, get out of here. Holy shit. Oh, that is good. Hmm. By the way, sorry for not muting. Um be careful um, about saying this has more versatility than Disfigure. It has different versatility than Disfigure. Because Disfigure is instant speed minus two minus two. Um, which can be valuable, for instance, if maybe I can't kill a creature, but I can minus two minus two to give it two power to allow me to then play um, Elspeth's Nightmare. Pick it off, something like this. Um, or even just a simple, I block with a big creature. Minus two, minus two, so my creature lives, your creature dies. Yeah, but still, it's... I have been wanting an instant speed minus two in black forever, so this is amazing. Black is looking great! I can't wait to make some nonsense. Leech Fanatic, one and a black. As long as it's your turn, Leech Fanatic has lifelink. That's a limited card. We don't care about it. I love the ink. I love the ink in this. Goth is on the menu. Oh, yeah, with the blue. Daddy Depression 96 says, can't tell if Sean is sarcastic or not. Oh, um, this is an absolute 1,000% 5 out of 5 with sincerity. It's a very, 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 very strong card because black does not have one mana, instant speed, minus two. It just lacks that straight up. It's plus two, minus two. Exactly. The minus two is the only one that we care about here. Black has been desperate for some sort of minus two effect. Because um, uh, Disfigure w is not in rotation right now. Um, so it's, it's just amazing. It's just incredible. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, zero out of five. Mage Hunter. Three and a black. Whenever an opponent casts or copies an instant or sorcery spell, they lose one life. 
Oh, yeah. That is fun. This is a limited card. Has cool art. I love it. Mage Hunters Onslaught. Two and double black. Destroy creature Planeswalker. Whenever a creature blocks this turn, its control loses one life. Oh, get out of here. You've already given me instant speed exile effects. I don't need this Mage Hunters Onslaught. All right, limited players. Necrotic Fumes. Ah, yes, how my apartment smells in quarantine. One and a pair of black is an additional cost to cast this spell, exile a creature you control. Exile target creature, Planeswalker. What? Huh. I think this would be more playable if, as an additional cost, you had to exile your entire library. That would make it pretty cool, huh? Oh my god, this is really bad. Like, it's going to work in Limited because I know that Black Green summons a lot of pest tokens. But I mean, dude, give me Spark Harvest. Because then that makes it cost one. It exiles, but like, meh. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, Necrotic Fumes is good if you have tests for talents and you can counter it, so then that way you can get them out of your deck even though you didn't put any in because these are all on your sideboard. Novice Dissector. Three and a black. Sacrifice another creature. Put a plus and plus and counter on target creature. Activate only as a sorcery. No wonder it's a Novice Dissector and not an Expert Dissector. Yeah, Jofu, we, we, we know that you get lessons for free from learning. We, we were talking about that a little earlier, especially when comparing it to Adventure, where each half of the Adventure is actually quite bad individually, but together um, they are they, they look strong. But I, I'd still write this as absolute thundering dog shit in any format except for uh, const uh, Limited. Um, Auric Lore Mage. Oh, an Auric Lore Mage. An Oracle Mage. An Auric Lore Mage. Okay. Two and double black. Search your library for a card. Put it in your graveyard. Shuffle. If it's an instant sorcery card, put a plus one plus one counter on orc. Lower mage. Search your library for a card. Put it in your graveyard and shuffle. If it's an instant sorcery, it gets bigger. If any of you don't play formats like Modern or Legacy or Vintage, the, like getting the thing that you want to get into the graveyard is essential to some decks. Um, the question is, will that ever be essential in Standard? And I think the answer is how dare you. You know what I mean? Oracle or Mage is working so hard to have cool art and have cool resonance with all these graveyard lovers. And you want to give it a low rating? Yeah, yeah, I'd give it a zero out of five. It's, it's four mana, and then you wait a turn, and then you tap it, and one thing goes in the graveyard and it becomes one, one. No, no. Plum the Forbidden. One and a black. As an additional cost to cast a spell, you may sacrifice one or more creatures. When you do, copy this spell for each creature sacked this way. You draw a card and lose a life. This is just very, 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 very limited-y. Because in limited, that's when you are going to consistently be able to have lots of stuff. And given that black-green is a pest-focused thing cool. You sack a pest, it gains a life. You cast Palm the Forbidden, you lose a life. So it goes digga, 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 and it wiggles. It does whatever the hell the Ice Climbers do. So, um, Plum the Forbidden I really feel like is just a limited card. In Constructed, you have something like Village Rights. Pay one to sack a thing and draw two. And I feel like that makes more sense. 
There's one, one very specific case where I think it could be valuable, which is what Albatross of Time is talking about. Which is like, if you're an Orzhov list that has a lot of those, whenever a creature you control dies, you gain a life and your opponent loses a life, you have a couple of these out. Man, how do I sacrifice all of them? Plum the Forbidden. Bam, 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 bam. Pick off my whole board and rat-a-tat you to death. And for that reason, I give it a 0 out of 5 in Constructed. <laughs> Poet's Quill. Ah, yes, this is you. When you get your fingers down to your keyboard. No, that's not you. That's you when you get a match. And you get your pointer finger down, it's time to just... Oh, I have a saucy pickup line. Woo. <laughs> Poet's Quill wanted a black. When Poet's Quill learns a battlefield, learn. Crip creature gets plus one, plus one, and has lifelink. Alright, that's... That's... Wow, that's actually... Huh. Huh. It's a learn equipment. I don't know. Huh. I was starting to build a really stupid story about... Pickup lines and Tinder and all that. Oh, Tim Man says, please grace with your saucy pickup line. Oh, yeah. Are you an extractor trick, baby? Because you're 11 out of 10. All right. Um, Poet's Quill is actually reasonably good. It's reasonably good and limited. Yeah, you haven't heard that StarCraft pickup line? That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you don't play StarCraft, I... Don't make any sense right now. Poet's Quill is actually interesting because it's a two mana learner, and getting plus one plus one in Life Link is occasionally relevant when you have like, um, is it a Shadow Spear? Why can't I remember the name of any single thing? But there's the Life Linking Trampling. Um, I think it's terrible. It's probably terrible. Maybe it's pretty good. It's definitely a limited beater. Definitely a limited beater. I like this a lot in limited. Ooh, do I like it. Oh, I like it a lot. You know, the, these types of lifelink cards can be extremely oppressive in limited formats where you never have to worry about the defense. You just keep smashing into the face. And especially with all the um, black magic take damage to do a good thing sort of themes in there. I, I don't know. I actually like this card. But um, my, my brain is far too small to properly process it for a constructed. Professor Onyx. Oh. Exile my heart, Professor. Four and a pair of black. Legendary Planeswalker. Oh, it's Liliana. Okay. Okay. Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Plus one, you lose one life. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest into the graveyard. Okay. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures that player controls. Minus eight, each opponent may discard a card. If they don't, they lose three life. Repeat this process six more times. Oh. Oh, man. Fuck. Okay. Um. I give her a two. <laughs> I give her a two. She sucks. No, maybe even a one. I think it's like a one. This is a one. Um, I I suppose that this and Vornclex is quite a nice beateroni on the pepperoni. Um, but okay, let me uh, briefly stepping into sincerity mode. Here, here's why pressure Onyx is bad. Professor Onyx is a six mana Planeswalker. Often when you get to turn six, the Planeswalker needs to do something on the battlefield to protect itself the turn it's played. As an extreme example, Ugin. Ugin is an eight mana Planeswalker. When it's played, you exile everything that's there. So can this Planeswalker prote protect itself relative to how much your opponent can do on that turn? So a good example is Chandra Torch of Defiance. She's four mana, and she can deal four damage when she enters the battlefield, right? So... What's going to happen on turn four? Well, if you've been doing a reasonable job of removing, your opponent should have, like, a creature on turn four. Or not on turn four, by the time you have four mana is a more accurate one. Uh, because often Torch of Defiance decks have, like, a two-mana ramp card, so you're playing her on turn three. 
things like this. Um, so that's relative to turn four, or more accurately, when you and I both have four mana. So Ugin, who's at eight, your opponent should be able to have had a ton of shit on the board, which is why Ugin is still proportionately good, because it's deal with the board is proportional to how much your opponent can do by the time an Ugin comes out. Professor Onyx, this minus three, each opponent sacks a creature with the greatest power among creatures that player controls. That's kind of, uh, it's not really that clear to me that that will be able to do, will be able to guarantee that Professor Onyx has cleared the board. Again, if Chandra Torch of Defiance has a targeted removal, Ugin shits on everything, but in the middle at six mana, your opponent should have either a big board or two creatures or a creature and a planeswalker. Because obviously, if your opponent doesn't have any of those things, any planeswalker is great. So we're trying to think about when Professor Onyx will be used in a more reasonable setting. So for that reason, I think that she's like, eh. Very eh. And I think Katsundere says the, uh, the, the spot on comment. I think the best use case is probably Blood on the Snow. Does Blood on the Snow bring back only Snow Permanence or any permanent? Yep, so um, in uh, Limited, this is just absolutely baller. Uh, but yeah, I think I think Blood on the Snow with Professor Onyx seems pretty, pretty tight, pretty tight, right? Because you're drawing cards, you're draining the opponent for mana. I think th this is very, very nice. I'm excited to do a Mono Black Control deck with Professor Onyx. Trying to make Professor Onyx work. Trying to make her work, 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 work. Burp, 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 burp. I want that song, but performed by Beaker. Uh, yeah, so that's that's my evaluation. And, uh, oh. Easy BFT. Uh, just gifted five subs and says, uh, Sean, re-roll the rating as a five. All right. Professor Onyx is the best Planeswalker we've seen yet. Um, yeah, yeah, five out of five. <laughs> yeah, 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 cloudy music is spot on. Move over, Oko. Woo! Oh my god, let me tell you, Professor Onyx is so good. You can play her, and thanks to this Magecraft passive, you don't ever even need to know how to read and you can win the game. It's so good! Oh my god, the best part about Professor Onyx is that you get passed through equity as a broadcaster. You can hit the minus three, and then your opponent has to figure out how to sacrifice the shit. So good. I'm always looking for ways to reduce the total number of clicks, which is why I've been streaming Age of Empires 2. It's an RTS game made for babies. All right, Professor Onyx, clearly the most powerful Planeswalker we've seen yet. Um, I This minus eight, each opponent may discard a card. If they don't, they lose three life. I'd rather play Turgrid. I'd rather play Turgrid. Turgrid's Lantern is a lantern that does this all by itself. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. You know what I'm saying? Shadowcat91 says, so selling ratings has been the best part of the set review. I know, right? Listen, it's going so well that on the next set review, what we're going to do is we're going to create a gotcha mechanic where that way you can like, there's a, there's a little sheriff cat doll and you like pull the lever. There's a random probability that you will get a little egg. When you crack the egg open, you can feed those eggs into a different cat, which when it gets big enough, you get to re-roll maybe one of the cards that we've already rated. But again, you don't actually get to pick which card you get the re-rated re-roll for. No, it's just a card. It's just, Sean, re-roll this rating. It's really incredible. But the good news is, for the best value, you can get 70 pulls of the Sheriff Arm for $99.99. Mm -hmm. Or you can pay $12 to double the amount of XP you gain in this channel, which gives you channel points, which you can use to bet against me because you're a hater. Um, uh, let's move on. Let's see here. Oh my god, Tsuruzelos! Gift in five on our fine review day. Thanks, Tsuruzelos. If you want me to do anything, as always, because I'm a broadcaster, I am at your beck and call. All right, Professor's warning. <laughs> Don't talk to Sean, he's weird. 
Professor's Warning, one black. Instant. Choose one. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Great. Combat trick for limited. Doesn't get run and constructed. Promising Dusk Mage. I love this ink. Oh my god. It is the greatest Street Fighter 4 vibes. Man, there's a legendary arcade um, about 30 minutes east of me called Arcade Infinity. Uh, it's gone. It's busto. My god, I I was there like the very opening night of when um, Street Fighter 4 was in. God, that was so fucking sick, man. That was so sick. Oh my god, the lines were huge. Just watching everyone get all inky. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So good. So excellent. Alright, I gotta scroll down. I gotta scroll down. I gotta scroll down. I gotta scroll down. Oh my god, BTB15. Just get the dust five. <gasps> Y'all getting in queue for rerolls. Promising Dusk Mage. When Promising Dusk Mage dies, I had a plus one plus one counter. I want to draw a card. It's a limited card. Get out of here. Sedgemore Witch. Two and a black. With a 3 2 menace. Ooh. Ward. Pay three life. Whenever this creature becomes target of a spell or ability, counter unless that. So player pays three life. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, you gain one life. Four. Four, 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 four. Four, 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 four. Why is it not a five? It's just a, it's just a creature, okay? I mean, come on. But I'll give it a four. Oh, I'll give it a four for sure. Here's the thing. A 3-2 Menace is a legitimate body in um, Constructed. Not like any 3-2 with menace, menace. Not like a Bogart Brute. We're good to go. But it's like, okay, I'm willing to keep reading, you know. Um, this is whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, make a whole bunch of pests. Well, hey... Golgari typically as an archetypical color combo. I, I don't remember what the name of the Golgari school is. It's like Dredge Flower or some shit. Witherbloom, thank you. Wither Dredge Flower. <laughs> it's like Death Pollen or some shit. Um, like, okay, so Sedgemore Witch, the fact that um, Sedgemore Witch is generating a variety of uh, sacrifice targets is an extraordinary activator for a lot of really, really, really nice uh, Golgari stuff in the future. So this this just makes me excited. Uh, and also this ward effect is pretty cool. Um, that said, I think that something that is essential is that a um, Golgari deck has a good long-term game plan. Just being able to make a bunch of 1-1s one and having a 3-2 with Menace, it's just not enough damage. It's just not enough power. It's not enough like, oh my god, this, you're going to close the game out fast. Or this can protect itself like a hollow head <laughs> snatching tin. I'll never remember its name. It's been deleted from my brain. I've made so many dumb names for that 3-1 indestructible white card that I can't remember it anymore. But this, this card is definitely an above average pick. Spectre of the Fens, three and a black flying target opponent loses two life and gain two life. This is a constructed card. It's a fine card to have like one of in construct or in um uh, fuck. This is a limited card. It's fine to have one of in a limited deck as a way to eventually close the game out. And by the way, these drain effects, lose two life and gain two life, are really good if you can stall the board out. Like really good. Tenured ink caster. Oh, there's the bird. There's the bird. What's his name? Mavindi? Tenured Ink Caster. Four and a black. When Tenured Ink Caster enters the battlefield, put a plus and plus and counter attack creature. Nice. When a creature you control with plus and plus and counter attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Huh. Mediocre. Not amazing, but this is one of these um, uncommon build arounds. In. Um, Limited, you typically look for what is the uncommon card that enables some archetype. So, plus one, plus one, black, white counters. Done. Um, so, you get a whole bunch of these counterful guys early on, and then you play a tenured ink caster, and you start swinging and draining your opponent for tons and tons and tons of life. 
So I think it's okay. Uh, is this a, a constructed card? Not a chance. Five mana for a 2-2? Two, two? Get out of here. Umbral Juke. Two and a black. Choose one target player. Sacks a creature or planeswalker. Mm -hmm. Create a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. Huh. This is this is really nice. This is really nice. This is really, 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 really nice. So three mana for instant speed you sack a thing, that just shows up. You just see that. It's just really nice. And then maybe if you're up against a player that is like a control mage who's trying to do all sorts of stuff on your turn, you can always just pop down the two and one flyer. Smack in. So this is just like a really... This is like a main boardable card. I love this. Four out of five in Constructed. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I love it. Unwilling Ingredient. Ugh. 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 The creative team did a good job on this, which is why I'm reacting so negatively to it. Ugh. A 1-1 one, one with Menace. Exile Unwilling Ingredient from your graveyard. You draw a card and you lose one life. Oh. I don't even know how to evaluate this. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's a zero out of five. But this is one of the most fascinating designs. A one-one menace, so it just pokes and pokes and pokes and pokes, and then just turns into a card later. Really nice. Really, really, really nice. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. <sighs> nice. Okay. We're on the er part of Burr. Here we go. Academic Dispute for red. Perfect. Target creature blocks this turn if able. You may have it gain reach until end of turn. Learn. <laughs> okay. This is a card that is built for a format known as Limited. Delicious. Here's the use case limited. Academic Dispute, their tiny creature, swing with a big creature, and then their tiny creature has to block your big creature. So it's it's a removal spell that draws. It's actually quite good. It's actually quite a good uh, card. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just like a it's, a, it's a circumstantial draw that draws a learn card. I like it quite a bit. Um, technically, it's a way for you to block a flyer as well. Um, this is a super versatile card. I love this. I give it a 4 out of 5 in limited. I think it's great. Ardent Dust Speaker. 4 and a red for a Minotaur Shaman. Whenever Ardent... Uh, oh, it's a 3-4. Okay. Whenever Ardent Dust Speaker attacks, you may put an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. If you do exile the top two cards of your library, you may play those cards this turn. Okay, so you can turn instants and sorceries in your graveyard into the ability to draw two cards when you attack. So this card is incredible and limited. It's incredible, incredible, incredible and limited. Great. Blood Age General. Not constructed. Way too expensive. Blood Age General 1 and A or red. Attacking spirits get plus 1, plus 0 oh, till end. Uh, oh. This art is hilarious. Oh my god, he's a clown from Dark Souls. Look at him. He's like, hey everyone, hope you're all praising the sun today. Good to be here. What the hell? This is the funniest card art I've ever seen. Look at this Blood Age General being all tough, being all sassy. All right, I'm going to put that salad down there. It only has green stuff in it. Um, Attacking Spirits get plus one, plus oh, until end of turn. Has merit, has merit. This is good pack filler for limited. Conspiracy theorist. <laughs> Here is what you need to know before the stock market opens if you're interested in going to the moon. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I've seen those daily threads. They drive me insane. 
Uh, and this is this is why Dogecoin is going to be the cryptocurrency of the future. I uh, I just sold an NFT on an NFT, and yeah, no conspiracy theorists one in a red for a two two. When conspiracy theorists tax, you may pay one discard a card if you do draw a card. Whenever you discard one or more non-land cards, you may exile one of them from your graveyard. If you do, you may cast it this turn. So when conspiracy theorist attacks, I can pay one to discard the card that I want to cast, and then I draw one. It's fine. Caldecott. Happy 105 month anniversary, Caldecott. Oh, yes. Oh, man. Good to see you. Crazy for cycling. Eh. It's okay. Doesn't feel very good and constructed. Because, first of all, it, need, it needs to wait a turn before it does stuff. Sucks. I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5 because it's a gold card. It's the only reason I respect this color. It's a gold card. Um, it, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. I don't like it. I don't like it. Crackle with power. I haven't read the card, but its casting cost is my favorite we've seen yet. X, 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 red, red. Crackle with Power deals 5 times X damage to each of up to X targets. Scritchy, scratchy. Okay, so if X is 2, then it is 2, 4, 6, 7, 8. So then 2 times 5 is 10, so it can deal 5 damage 10 times for each of up to 10 targets. Okay, if X is 4, we can get it. So 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2 is 14. Oh, 10 damage to 2 targets? That's what I thought in my mind. And if what I said was wrong, I don't care. Because one of the targets is your fucking dome, bro. It's your dome. Okay? It can shoot the face. This is the fucking card. This is the card. Can you imagine a list with, like, Cultivate? Iron Crag Feet? My god. Oh my god. Put some fucking Gold Span Dragons in there? Oh my god. Snowkate says just counterspell it. No, I don't run this against blue. Not in my matchmaker. <laughs> Holy shit. Five out of five. I love this card. This card is fucking awesome. Let's see. If it's one, two, three, four, five. So you can spend five mana to deal five damage to one target. However, you can also wait till eight mana. Yes. Oh, add Fire Emancipation on top of this. Holy shit. It's the very first jank we've ever seen. Crackle with Power is it. It's my favorite card we've seen. Um, Draconic Intervention. Two and a pair of reds. Is an additional cost to cast a spell, exile, and instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. Fine. Draconic Intervention deals X damage to each non-dragon creature where X is the exiled card's mana value. If a creature dealt damage this way, it would die. Exile it instead. Huh. Huh. So this card is really terrible. Right? This card's fucking terrible. Right? This is a terrible, terrible... This is a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad card. Okay. So, we could do Storm's Wrath, which is deal 4 damage unconditionally to all creatures and all planeswalkers. This needs an instant or sorcery in the grave. 
So, on turn four, at best we can have a three coster in the graveyard, assuming normal conditions. So then it deals three damage to each non-dragon creature, and exiles, and then it exiles itself. I don't want to pay four to... I'm going to give this a negative one out of five, especially because it says non-dragon, which makes me think that I should run it in a dragon deck before remembering that it's terrible. Mm -mm, this card is offensive to me. Don't even like it a little bit. Now, this could be potentially quite nifty if I can exile something that costs like seven, and then it deals seven damage to everything. But we don't like it. Dragon's Approach. Who doesn't love dragons? Dragon's Approach deals three damage to each opponent. You may exile Dragon's Approach and four cards named Dragon's Approach from your graveyard. If you do, search your library for a dragon creature card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. A deck can have any number of cards named Dragon's Approach. Oh. Bro. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, it feels good just to know that this card exists, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Oh, my God. Oh. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Can you imagine a Dragon's Approach deck that runs Goldspan Dragons? Wow, wowie zowie chicken plowy. Dude, fuck yeah. Dude. Dude. Dude, 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 dude. I this card is so bad that it loops back around our zero out of five scale over to five out of five. We couldn't go below five without returning. It's incredible. We we actually you might not know this, but we do ratings mod five here. Uh so this one. I messed up the joke. <laughs> Mathematicians see how, because there's no such thing as a five out of, okay. Efreet Flame Painter. Oh, Efreet Knox somewhere is beginning to quiver with excitement. His little feet are cramping, man. He's, oh! Knox loves Efreets and genies, man. There's any gins. Efreet Flame Painter, three and a red. Efreet Shaman, a one four with double strike. Oh, dude, the red cards are so good. All right, whenever Efreet Flame Painter deals combat damage to a player, you may cast target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into your grave... Read this fucking card right now. Whenever it deals combat damage, whenever it deals combat damage, you may just cast an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. You can just cast it. It's not you. It has to be less than this cost. It doesn't have to... Mm. Oh. Oh, my God. Okay. Do you remember... I think... It's, is it called Footfall Crater? It's a one mana cycling card that you cast on a land that gives the land tap target creature gets haste. Can you imagine giving this last haste? Mmm. Mmm. Ooh. Mmm. Wow, I would not make a good card dashing with the way I duck lip. I don't know. Mmm. Ooh. <laughs> Can't pull it off. But we do have the sultry emote. We do have the sultry emote for sure. Whoops. Oh my god, dude. There's just nothing but good stuff coming in. Ooh. Mm. Oh wait, we, we, we just received 10 subscriptions from Windweaver. Windweaver. Who wants to maybe wee wall something? Not a chance. Well, I haven't seen it if you have. Apologies if you have. I can't read it all. Enthusiastic study. Two and a red. Target creature gets plus three, plus one, and gets trample until end of turn learn. It's a worse run amok. But probably a very good combat trick and constructed. Not very great outside of that, though. Oh, five out of five, because I'm going to try to run this garbage. By the way, th like this card is probably a zero. 
probably a zero, probably a one. Um, but we give them all fives here because I'm here to compose truth. Explosive welcome, what you provide to me every single time I go live. Seven and a red, yes. Explosive welcome deals five damage to any target, three damage to any other target. Add red, red, red. How do I get this in my graveyard? And how do I get this Efreet Flame Painter to cast this explosive welcome? Oh my god. Hrollins says Efreet Double Strike means I can cast two spells, right? You bet your whole ass it does. Guess what? The proud owner of two asses. I don't know who the poor lass is betting their ass on the ass betting market. For every ass gained, there is an ass lost. Meanwhile, there's troves of people assless walking around like Gumbies, sad, devastated. And someone who's literally only asses. Looks like the monster at the end of Inside, except instead of limbs, it's asses. That could be you if you keep playing this Devil Striker, Rollins. Explosive Welcome. Cast it from the graveyard for free. Explosive Welcome just deals damage. Oh, it's incredible. Oh, it's five out of five. I fucking love these cards. Shit. Fervent Mastery. Three and two reds. You may pay a little less. If a little less was paid, an opponent discards any number of cards and draws that many cards. Right. Search your library for up to three cards. Put them in your hand, shuffle, and discard three cards at random. So let me get this straight. <laughs> what I'm going to do with Fervent Mastery is I'm going to have five cards in my hand. No. No, I guess I can have two cards in my hand. I can have Land and Fervent Mastery. Okay. What I can do is put three copies of my win condition in my hand with Fervent Mastery and the Land. And then there's a 75% chance I get to keep my win condition. <laughs> it's fucking really fun, man. It's really fun. It's really fun. It's like, Sean, would you like to cast Idyllic Tutor and find the card you need? Nah, I'm going to use Fervent Mastery so I can most of the time draw what I need. And sometimes not. But in the cases I don't... I have a land, which you can always play. <laughs> Fuck, man. Oh my god, now here's the thing. Look, I can fervent mastery to put into my graveyard some explosive welcomes, then double swing with the Efreet Flame Painter, dealing a bunch of damage and getting more red so that way I can cast another fervent mastery. Come here, Sheriff. Come here, I need your blessings. Come here. Stop stretching. Come on up. Come here, little one. Come on. All right. Our ratings are about to get way more gentle. Come here. Yeah, hi. Yeah, go on up. Oh, this set is so good. Yeah, I love you too, sweetheart. We're calling all the cards bad. We're going to build decks around them. Isn't that nice? This is my cat. This is Sheriff. This is one of the cats. This is, this is a very, very sweet, gentle cat. All she wants is to eat, to be snugged, and to be warm. She loves to eat, but she only weighs seven pounds. She's very tiny. First day of class, one in a red. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus, a plus counter on it, and it gains haste until end of turn. Okay. Learn. Put this over here. Well, this is interesting. You first day of class first. This is an interesting kind of burst because you can cast first day of class and then just start smacking out creatures. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good baby cat. Yeah. 
Not a good card. Fuming Effigy. Three and a red. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, Fuming Effigy deals one damage to each opponent. Oh my god, this is so fun. I mean, these cards are not constructed playable. But they're so good. Oh my god. Quantum Strides is maybe with Anointed Procession Tokens. Oh, that's dirty. Oh, isn't that, isn't that just... Isn't that pure filth? Isn't that pure filth, honey? Yeah, she thinks it's disgusting. Where are we going? There's just another shoulder over there. That's that's the public at large. Yeah, just don't don't make eye contact with them. Um, yeah, not constructed. Grinning Ignis two and a red. Return grinning Ignis to its owner's hand. Add colorless colorless. Red activate only as a sorcery. I shall pet my cat. S hmm. So if we get Bergy down, we play Grinning Ignis. We can flicker that to get infinite mana. Right? Because it Bergy says whenever you cast a spell, add one red mana. So imagine on turn three we play Bergy. Okay? Turn three. We have Bergy. Um, and on turn four, you play this for three. You gain a mana. You spend that mana to return it to your hand. And then you have three. <laughs> so then you can play it again. <laughs> you get a mana. And if you do that enough times... You still just have the one untapped mountain and no additional mana. <laughs> no wonder the cat left, man. <laughs> this card doesn't make any sense. This card is like, someone's like, look, I designed it. I'm keeping it in there. And that's all there is to it. Hey, you okay? What are you doing? <laughs> this card sucks. What you need is multiple birdies. Okay. Hall Monitor. Oh, they do look like that, though, huh? A 1-1 one, one Haster? Target creature can't block this turn? Oh, my God. Oh, oh, that's it. You do this with Bergy, you loop infinitely. Where is it? Yeah, then you show of confidence. Oh, wait, this is not, this is not for spells. This is for instance and sorceries. I knew this card sucked ass. <laughs> Hi. Here is my temperamental cat. This is Despy. Alright. Let's, let's go this way. Honey, get come here. Get out of the, Come here. You're blocking me. I'm the most important part of this broadcast. Yeah, look here. Just, just sit down. There you go. Hall Monitor is a 1-1 Haster, always a candidate, always a candidate for being relevant in red, um, especially with this target creature can't block this turn. I think this is a relevantly reasonable red card. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. I genuinely think 1-1 Hasters with upside are just broadly good, especially a target creature can't block this turn. Very good. Very excellent. Very excellent. Oh my god. Adrigal says, can we focus more on the name? It's a hall monitor, and a monitor lizard is a, it's a thing that exists. Not that we care much about things that exist in real life. I gotta be honest, man, as a, as a big fan of video games and just general fiction, like, I don't know what it is about, like, oh my god, that's a reference to the thing that's in real life that I've never seen and never will because I don't go outside stunning to me, but I like this one. Heated Debate. Two and a red. Spell can't be countered. Fuck yeah. It deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker. It's the deals four damage to target creature or it's the or planeswalker part that's relevant. Um, this, this has to be relevant. This has to be good. This has to be good. This also is very good for my hatred of Demir. Mm-hmm. Demir can suck it.
It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Um... It's okay. It's okay. I mean, it's it's a, it's a sideboard card. It's four damage for three is weak because we already have five damage for um for three. Well, I guess this one hits planeswalkers too. The fact that it can't be countered is the big one. But most of the time, you don't really want to use this kind of removal. Like if you are a red deck and you're up against a control deck, a planeswalker control deck, what you really want to use is more aggression, things like Robber the Riches, things like Roiling Vortexes, shit like this. Heated Debate really, to me, feels like precisely good against Rogue, so for this reason I give it a 1 out of 5. It will see play, it won't see tons of play. Igneous Inspiration. Not Ingenious Inspiration, Igneous. Uh, 2 and a red. Igneous Inspiration deals 3 damage to any target. Learn. Mm-mm. Very good and limited. Not a constructed card. Illuminate History. Two, red, red. Discard a number of cards, then draw that many cards. Then, if there are seven or more cards in your graveyard, create a single three, two, red and white spirit creature token. Highly lame. There's a reason red mages don't want to learn anything. We only ever want to act on impulse and chaos. We're skipping ahead. Not a chance. We're, we're a fan of this one. Illustrious Historian. One in a red. Exile Illustrious Historian from your graveyard. Create a tap three, two, red and white spirit creature token. Huh. Huh. Kind of a fun value card. Kind of a fun one. But a zero and constructed, it's a limited card. You play it, you bonk, you trade. It comes back as a 3-2 that's still not very good. But, you know, this is a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. Limited. It is a solid beta. Mascot interception. <laughs> what I assume is that there is a bomb attached to the mascot, and they're trying to go stop him. Three in a red. The spell costs three less to cast if it targets a creature token. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gets plus two, plus oh, and gains haste till end of turn. Good stretch. Good stretch, baby. I love my cat. This is such a good reference. Such a, I mean, it's a good Quidditch reference. Um, good wizardly school reference. But also just like... Three less to cast if it targets a creature token. That's so good. That's so good. Pigment Storm. Ah, yes. What happens anytime you walk into a Claire's? Pigment Storm. Three and a pair of reds. Deals five damage to target creature. Excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. Whoa! Spell Trample. Zero out of five. Pillar Drop Warden. Three and a red. Reach for a one five. Sacrifice Pillar Drop Warden. Return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Activate only as a sorcery. And Excellent card. 1-5 reach is a wall and a half in limited. Like, oh my god, is this a good limited card. Damn. <laughs> Civil Scars is a dwarf with reach. He has ups. There's a reacher. Uh, and the ability to get back an instant or sorcery card. Love it. Love this design limited. I love phoenixes. Retriever phoenix. Three and red. Three and red. Creature phoenix. Flying haste. When retriever phoenix enters the battlefield, if you cast it, learn. Okay. As long as retriever phoenix is in your graveyard, if you would learn, you may instead return retriever phoenix to the battlefield. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. You guys. How do I get phoenixes in the graveyard? Oh my god. Let me tell you, red is giving me life. Red is giving me life. I am so in the mood for some dumb shit. I'm in. I'm in. Let me tell you. If you have some random red learners and you just fill the bin with phoenixes and shit, I mean, imagine this 
terrible, no good, very bad card, Igneous Inspiration. Shoot, learn, bring back to burn. Ooh, clickety-clack goes the crab. Can we get some crab lards in chat? Love my crab emotes. Doesn't even make sense. You do it with fervent mastery. Dude, 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 fervent mastery. Look at this. 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 Wait, 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 wait. It's cost two. Look, I can just draw three birds and bend three birds. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I got, I gotta make sure I read this correctly. If I learn, do I only bring back one? That's the question. Only once per learn, huh? Okay. You can only bring it back once per learn. Fuck! Damn it. Crap. No wonder Arclight Phoenix is a one of a kind thing. Well, whatever. Uh, zero out of five. Excuse me. Start from scratch. Lesson. Deal one damage to anyone or destroy an artifact. Destroy, actually, destroy an artifact is a really nice one to get. Sorcery speed sucks a little bit. I don't know how to evaluate any of these lessons. This seems like uh, a more strong niche lesson. Hey, look over here. There you go. Whoa. Whoa! We love head scratches. Oh, we're going to get the chin. Doesn't my cat have a beautiful coat of fur? Give me a beautiful coat. Come here. Down you go. Dad has to give things zeros. <laughs> this is a zero. Uh, Storm Kiln Artist. Three in a red. Storm Kiln Artist gets plus one plus zero oh for each artifact you control. <gasps> I'm a dwarf. You're a dwarf. We're dwarves that like making treasure and being strong because of treasure. Magecraft. Whenever you cast a cop. Oh my god. Or cast or cop. Holy shit. Oh, wait, this thing costs four. For some reason, I thought it cost two. Oh, mm -mm. I apologize. I apologize. This card is... It's not good. It's not it. How many times have the United States folded in half? Yeah, that's the, that's the rating I would give this. I'd give it a zero out of five. Or maybe a one out of five. Sudden breakthrough. One in a red. Target creature gets plus two, plus oh, and gains first strike until end of turn. Creative treasure token. Nice. It's a little red ramp. It's a little red ramp. Little red ramping hood. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I actually think Sudden Breakthrough, um, it needs a creature. Ah, it really does feel... Um, feels very limited-y. Plus two, plus one, first strike is nice. Treasure token is good for ramping. It's really nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just a limited card. It doesn't do anything to me in Constructed. Tome Shredder. Ow! Two and a red. Haste. Nice. Exile instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Tome Shredder. Huh. Oh. Has a has an uh, an air of bolt houndiness to it, um, so it's a zero. It's a zero out of five. It's a little limited card. It's fun. Twin scroll shaman one two with double strike. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, yes. No. All right, we're on to green. Okay, we found the good red cards. It's this one. This is a good card. This is a good card. This card's pretty nice. This card's pretty nice. Fervent Mastery. Clickety clack. Loving the Crab Lars. All right. All right. All right. We are on to green. Now, here's what we're going to do. Ordinarily, I do woo, I do burr, and then I do everything else. But we're going to do woo. And Berg, we're gonna do all the green cards, and when we come back, or er, we're gonna do all the green cards now, and then 
we're going to take a break. And then when we come back, we'll do Artifact Multicolored and Lane. Accomplished Alchemist. A 3 and a green for a 2-5. Yes. Add 1 mana of any color. Add X mana of any color, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. I do declare, imagine in a world where you are running a Naya deck. Oh, what's the what what's the Heliod's intervention? X and double white to gain twice X life? Accomplish Alchemist adds X red crackling power? Then X's to the face? <gasps> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Crackling power? Or crackle with power? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Too bad Palaka Worm is not in standard. God damn, I want to run Palaka into Palaka. Oh, my God. That's making me Palaka squirm at my desk. This card, by and large, is weird. Okay, here's why this card's weird. Uh, I I think that maybe the archetype that I'm most known for is my love of ramp shit. I like getting big. Ow. I really like rampy insanity. I love that stuff. So here's the thing. Do I love Lanor Elf a lot? No, not really. And here's one of the reasons why. Lanor Elf can be killed, so the context in which the Lanor Elf is good is allowing you to get down a turn three creature on turn two, or a turn four creature on turn three. This is why cards like Explore or Grow Spiral are very appealing to me because they're like two mana uh, things that allow me to do a four mana thing on turn three. So I like lots of land. Because land can't be removed, you can't unramp, right? So a lot of ramp things are ways to, on turn two, three, four, five, get a card down that is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's kind of cheat things out a turn or two early. So accomplished alchemist as a four mana add a or a four cost add one mana card. It doesn't really do that. So the primary use case that is interesting to me is this second one, add X mana of any one color. So that's why I immediately go to like Crackle with Power or anything with an X in the cost. Gain a bunch of life, turn the sideways, boom. Um, so I give this a zero out of five, but we'll try to make some good stuff work with it. Basic Conjuration, one in a double green for a lesson. Hmm. Look at the top six cards, reveal a creature, uh, put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom, you gain three life. This is like the best lesson I've seen. It's consistent, it does something, it is sorcery speed, boo, it gains a little life. It's the best lesson I've seen. I'm just not feeling that good about lessons, but again, lessons are undervalued because, or excuse me, they're underpowered because you just get it for free from a card that's already pretty good. So it's kind of like a build your own adventure card is I think the way to think of it because Brazen Bar was always bounce and a 3-1 flyer always but if it said bounce a card and learn anything can be the, the second piece anything can be the second lesson um, for any who don't know look at the top six cards is like virtually guaranteed in terms of the construction six is a ton um yeah, I don't know. I like this. I'd, I'd give it, it, it... This is my favorite lesson yet. This is my favorite lesson yet. My favorite lesson yet. Zero out of five in Constructed. Bayou Groff. One and a green for a plant dog. An additional cause to cast a spell, sacrifice creature, or pay three. Oh, it's plant dog. What up? I'm Bayou Groff. I'm plant dog. I will absolutely make a pest, sack a pest, get a Bayou Groff, plant dog, coming to town. This is actually kind of a funny one, um, especially with that 1-1 one, one menace nerd that redraws in the graveyard. Oh yeah, plant dog. I can't wait to turn these pests into good old 5-4 plant dogs. I'm never going to stop saying that every time I have this card in my hand. And you know what, it's annoying for me too. I, I concede this. Um, is it a constructed card? No! You need something better than plant dog. 
Big Play. Have you heard of Big Play? Dark creature gets plus two plus two and gains reach on deferring, but a plus one plus one counter on it. Ooh, that actually is a big play. I I love these kinds of combat tricks. Plus two plus two and reach. Oh shit, that's really good. I mean, it's basically giving something plus three plus three. It's a giant growth. It's getting reach. Fuck, that's a good one. I'd give that a five in limited. I love this card. This card is so sick. It's probably not worthy of a 5, but I'm giving it that, and I'm never wrong. I like being correct. It feels nice. <laughs> the older I get, the more I realize how not important it is to be right all the time. But I do want to just be clear that in this broadcast, since we've gone live, I've been right the whole time, and you can't take that away from me. Bookworm, 7 in a green for a 7-7 seven, seven trampler. When Bookworm enters the battlefield, you gain 3 life and draw a card. I'm so happy I want to throw up. Oh my god. It's like a palaka worm. It's big. It tramples. It gains life. It draws cards. Put bookworm from your graveyard into your library third from the top. It just keeps coming back. I mean, this is very fucking good there is a problem it's eight and that is a metric fucking shitload of mana do i like getting that much mana yes yes i do would it plausibly be better to not get the bookworm and get emergent ultimatum no i love this card I love this card. You cast this card, Ugin can't get rid of it. Because Ugin's a shitter. Hmm? Am I right? <laughs> that spirit dragon can go suck a fat one. I have eight converted mana costs. Why don't you come out, deal three damage, which I've already healed, and then I can crack you in the face. Excellent. I think the green... The green, the greens are mine. The reds and the greens are my favorite right now. I love this card. This is a five out of five. Constructed. I'm gonna make this work. Oh, mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, this one's so delicious. Yeah. Oh my god. Now all I need to do is, you know, I'm gonna run Bookworm in a black deck. So that way we can have Necromentia to get rid of the Emergent Ultimatums because I'm never gonna fucking run. Test the, test the talents. Take all the talents. Whatever it's called. I love this card. This is a game-winning limited card. Absolute game-winning, bone-crushing, worm-smacking goodness. I love this one. Charge through. Instant. Dark creature gains trample until end of turn. Draw a card. Oh, does it now? Not good. Not good. Not a chance. Gaining a keyword, not even a keyword counter. Pfft. In the dump. Don't like it. Don't care about it. Drawn a card's pretty fun, though. Containment Breach. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. If its mana value is two or less, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token with when it dies again in life. Bad. I think all the learn lessons are bad. Zero, 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 zero. Give me my natural eyes. Keep your pests. I don't want to learn anything. Devouring tendrils. <gasps> One in a green. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power. Target creature or plane or oh, creature or planeswalker you don't control. When the permanent you don't control dies this turn, you gain one life. Okay, so it's a deal damage equal to power effect that also circumstantially gains life. Good and limited, not unconstructed. No. Dragon's Guard Elite. Ooh, that's some pretty ass art. One and a green. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery card, put a plus one plus one counter on Dragon's Guard Elite. Wow. Double the number of plus one plus one counters on Dragon's Guard Elite? Whoa! 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 
Okay. I mean, um... This is a two-mana 2-2 two, two that begins to get huge, right? Like uh, like a Nessian Horn Beetle um, is a legit two-drop grower. Um, th this is very clearly strong and limited. I, I don't know. Hey, hey, stop. What are you doing? Come here. Come here, stop, stop fiddling with my light. She keeps knocking my light over. What are you doing? She lashes her tail in contempt. Um, limited. Don't think it's going to work in Constructed. It might get a bunch of plus one, plus one counters. is neat. But it's Magecraft. I don't want to cast instant or sorceries if I'm playing green. Boo! Zero out of ten. Ecological Appreciation X2 green for a mythic rare sorcery. <gasps> Search your library and graveyard for up to Four creature cards with different names that each have mana value X or less and reveal them. An opponent chooses two of them. Shuffle the chosen cards in your library and put the rest on the battlefield. Oh! Oh my god! It's like, it's like an emergent ultimatum. Again. And we're so happy to see that. Ah. Oh. Wow, can I get X equals nine? Oh. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Wow, and it has to be creatures. Wow. Oh, you could cast this turn four to get a bunch of one costers. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Oh. If I pick Valky, I can put Tybalt onto play. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you fucking can. So you can do X equals three and do like uh, Essica. Um. Oh, no, you put them onto the battlefield. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, I thought it said cast. Uh, putting onto the battlefield is different from casting. Damn, the card's fair. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie pie. Yep. Goodbye. Uh, one out of five. We'll try to make it work. We'll try to make it work. We'll try to make it work. Emergent sequence. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield tap. Then shuffle. That land becomes a zero, zero green and blue fractal creature. That's still a land. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it for each land you had enter the battlefield under your control this turn. Let me think. So let me let me think about emergent sequence for a moment, please. So for two mana, I can get a land onto the battlefield from my deck that's a two two, right? Because again, on turn two I play a land and then emergent sequence causes another land to enter the battlefield. So it's a two two. This is, I mean, here, here's the thing, is that, like, early game, it's a 2-2 land or elf. Um, late game, if you are getting multiple lands out, it could occasionally be a 4-4 that gets another land. I mean, really, the thing is, I think I would run a Wolf Willow Haven instead. I think that seems right. I think Wolf Willow Haven is it over emergency sequence. Although this this thins the deck, but I don't know. Um, yep, yep, yep. 
Two out of five, because I'll probably make it work. I'll probably run four of these and four Wolf Willow Havens. Exponential growth. Until end of turn, double target creature's power X times. Please. Please. Do you realize how much I love raising things to powers of two? Oh my god. How much would I need to make it 32 times as powerful? Oh, 12 mana? That's it? What a bargain. What a bargain. Oh my god. God, this is so good. I mean, if you just do it as two when you 4x the power. XX, how does that work? Well, if I wanted X to be one, it would be one, one, green, green. So it would be four total. I mean, I think that it is terrible, but let's imagine for two and two and two, that's six. So that would be four Xing it. So maybe we have a deck where we have an Elder Gargaroth on five and then an Exponential Growth on six for 20 damage. I don't know, zero, zero out of five. It's not good. Oh, no, it's not a 5-5, five, five, it's a 6-6, six, six, 24 damage. Woohoo. Um, yeah, I think, I think I have to give it a 0. I have to give it a 0. Uh, what's the converted mana cost of this card? In the hand, it's 2. On the stack, it's whatever you paid for it. Field trip, 2 and a green. Search your library for a basic force uh, card. Put that on the battlefield. Tap, shuffle, learn. Worse than a cultivate. But we get a learn. Seems limited to me. Doesn't seem constructed. Fortifying dra draft. Anything that's A U G H T or O U G H is like so weird in English. Fortifying. Is it draw? Because I believe that that is pronounced draft. I'm pretty sure that that's pronounced draft. This is my cat's face. Um, and then, like, S-L-O-U-G-H is pronounced slough. There's so many weirds. There's an F in there. I believe that draught and draft are both correct. And I've also heard slough pronounced slough. That's pronounced slough? No, it's pronounced slough. And slough. Like, hold on, hold on. Do, 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 do. Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Here we go. We're opening a dictionary app on our phone. I'm really excited. S-L-O-U-G-H. And how's that pronounced? Slough. Oh, slough. All right, great. Oh, slough is the second pronunciation, but it doesn't actually have a uh, the ability to play that. Yeah. Slew, and then we have a... Uh, I don't know if you can see that. You can see the slew. <laughs> I'm still right! <laughs> yes, slough. slough. Slough is how I learned that it was pronounced. Slew, look, in English, this is just going to fuck you up. You shouldn't learn a language. Learn another language. You gain two life. Target creature gets plus X plus X, where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. Oh! Not bad. Not bad at all. It's like a... It's like a... A little worse than a giant growth. That's pretty good. Wow! Yeah, it's a limited card. Gnarled Professor. Oh! Dr. Tentacles. Two and a pair of greens for a 5-4 Tree Folk Druid when Gnarled Professor enters a battlefield learn. Please, this card is rad. Absolutely radular. I mean, great limited. Is it good and constructed? I mean, no. No, because I don't think there's a single lesson that you can learn in uh, Constructed that's good. 
Honor Troll. Oh, look, it's you. Stop licking your books. Two and a green for a 2-3. If you would gain life, you gain that much plus one instead. Honor Troll is a little bit bigger as long as you're quite healthy. Not a constructed card at all. Karak Wrangler, Magecraft. When you cast Cobbiness and Sorcery spell, put a counter on me. Reasonable in limited, horrific in constructed. A 5 mana 3-3 three, three where you then have to do stuff? Ugh, gross. Ley Line Invocation, a 6 mana. Create a 0, zero green and blue fractal token. Put X plus and plus and counters where X is the number of lands you control. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. Um, these make a bunch of fractal creature tokens is just not it. It's just not it. This is at least a 6-6. Six, six. It's going to be bigger later. We see fractals in it. I like fractals. I think they're interesting. I have had them as my backgrounds on my telephone. But not good. Not a good card. Mage Duel. Where's Mage Punch? I want that card. It does one of two things. It either involves punching someone or drinking a liquid. Mage Duel, two and a green. The spell costs two less to cast if you've cast another instant or sorcery spell this turn. Oh, that's interesting. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus two until end of turn, then it fights target creature that you do not control. It's a fight effect for one with a little bit of buffing. Temporary, it's a fight effect. It's okay. It's a limited card. Master Symmetrist, two and a pair of greens for a 4-4 Rhino Druid. Whenever a creature you control, with power equal to its toughness, attacks, it gains trample until end of turn. Very limited. Oh my god, this Master Symmetrist is obsessed with this cube. Absolutely obsessed. The art's beautiful. The Rhino is not. Let me tell you, if you really want a scary creature, you know what's way scarier than a Rhino? A Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus is the silliest name that there ever was. But is the scariest, man. Every time I read about hippopotamus attacks, it's just like... <laughs> truly the most gnarly metal shit. Hippos are horrifying. Yeah, man. It's so bad. So bad, overgrown arch! One and a green... Oh, at first I thought it was going to be like wall blossoms. Defender, tap, gain life, sacrifice, overgrown arch, learn. Oh my god, who is going to be playing some limited with your pal Day9 and doing nothing but tapping up an overgrown arch? Oh, oh my god, you just tap it to gain a life? Fuck yes, overgrown arch. This card's garbage, but I love it. Uh, Shadowcast is five subs a day until I hear a response from interview. Wait, Shadowcast, five subs a day keeps the bad thoughts at bay. What's happening, Shadowcast? What's happening? Oh, oh, as in you, you interviewed somewhere and you're subbing to support this content so you can mentally block out the fact that an interviewer has not contacted you. I get it now. Here's the thing, Shadowcast. Today we've been accepting gifted subs as bribes to re-roll the rating on any card. I'm now obsessed with Overgrown Arch. Ugh. Defender, gain one life. By the way, in uh, Limited, four toughness is an inflection point. Um, there's a lot of things that deal three and two. Pretty rare to have four damage and four toughness. So the fact that Overgrown Arch can come out, defend, and just keep click, 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 clack, tapping is some very good shit. We like to hear that. Shadowcast says, oh, bribes, that's always fun. I know. I'm really excited about it. Professor of Zoomancy. Oh, my God, this bear. Oh, my God. Hold on. I got it. I'm taking a screenshot of this. Hold on, let me let me open up. All right, I had to save that. I had to save that. I've just taken a screenshot of the bear. Um, this is going to become my profile photo. This is incredible. I love this bear. I love this bear. It's a four mana four three bear. When Professor of Zoomancy enters a battlefield, create some pests. Oh my god! Yes. Oh my god. This bear. I love this bear. Oh my god, look at how fat. Look at these little wrinkles in his neck. <gasps> he's adorable and he's trying so hard to do science. Oh my god. Oh, what a good bear. Look at this fucking bear. You know, I really. <laughs> 
Quigley Cuse has just got home. What did I miss? I like the idea that there's someone out there who's like, oh my god, is that day nine? He's the he was in the 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 mobile commercial with Danny Trail and Patton Oswalt. I've seen him host the magic events. Like, wow, this guy, I gotta see what his take is on the new Strixhaven cards. And then you tune in and just look at Professor Zoomancy. I'm like, there's fucking bear, I love this bear! I love this bear! Oh my god, what a good bear. Oh, she's brilliant. If a bit of her bearing, it's a lady bear. She's sciencing with her monocle and shit. She's like zooming in hard on this. Oh, I love this bear. Unbelievable. Best card in the set. This is this is absolutely... I'm going to make my Steam profile this shit. This is so good. Oh, she's brilliant. If a bit overbearing. Uh, 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 uh. Trash constructed card. Uh, moving on. Reckless Amplomancer. Ah, we have Lumi Mami and Ample Plample. Reckless Amplomancer. One and a green. Double Reckless Amplomancer is power and toughness until end of turn. Oh my god, I get so big. This uh, makes sense with the Counters Matter theme. Um, yeah, Ample Daddy, that's right. Actually, Tifa Anders, you're right. It's Lumi Mami and Ample Daddy. Those are the two names of them. Absolute Ample Daddy energy. Look at this really cool album I listened to when I was a youth. All right, Ample Daddy. Scurried Colony. Ah, yes, it's you. One and a green for a 2-2 reach. Scurried Colony gets plus two, plus two, as long as you control eight or more lands. Ah, yes, that's right. You all get stronger the more of you that there are. <laughs> you're, 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 you're my little squirrels. Look at you. Ugh. Give us nuts. Ugh. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I hate to say this, but I got to give you guys zero. You guys are terrible. You guys don't do anything valuable in the game. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, so you get a zero. Uh, spiked Karak. All right. Two and a green for a two four. That's it. That's the card. And I rate it a two out of four. Spring main servant. Springman Servant, two and a two and a green. When Springman Servant enters the battlefield, you gain two life, three out of two. It's just an elk. It's just an elk that just does stuff. You know. <laughs> Lobber TV is pronounced Calvin. Ah, yeah. It's it's Springman Kevin. <laughs> oh yeah, Springman Kevin. Yes. I am majestic. Be healed. And be beaten with a three two. Tangle trap! Ah, Tangle Trap. It's an argument on a forum that you didn't really care about that much, but they dunked on you so hard you're invested. Not in your success, but in the other person's failure. It's a Tangle Trap. One in a green for a deal five damage star creature with flying. Destroy target artifact. Ah. Zero out of five. Wait, what What did I just hit? Okay. Because I just all of a sudden saw a fist coming at me, and I was oh my god! M. Bronstein won, gifting five to us. M. Bronstein, did you want us to re-roll something? Because you got to hurry. We're almost at a green. We're almost at a green, M. Bronstein. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Uh, all right. Actually, I'll take this random question from Shadowcast. This is Sean ever talked about how he does finances with variable income. I'm curious how one invests in plans for one's future when their income isn't necessarily consistent. So um, just to halt on the silliness for a moment, because this is, I love this question. Um, so I, I think that a consistent error that many make when they are broadcasters or in a lot of variable income states, I was really into poker. I almost went full-time into poker after college until a professor talked me out of it. I was like, you don't fucking want to do that. <laughs> Um, but obviously being a small business owner um, who is subject to constant shifts in the market. Like, for instance, the, there was no... You had to pay money to broadcast when I first started as opposed to earn money to um, do broadcasting. Where the money comes from, ad revenue spiked and then ad revenue plummeted. Um, sponsorships are on the rise right now, this sort of thing. Um, there's a lot of changes, but there's also a lot of, like, game flow type things. Like, everyone and their fucking grandma was interested in Fortnite, like, a year and a half, two years ago. And now I would say that Fortnite has hit a more normal status uh, in the in the gaming ecosystem. I mean, obviously it's still hugely pop popular, but, like, 
the error that I see a lot of streamers make, a lot of new streamers make, or a lot of just variable income people make, is that they, because of the kind of person you have to be to live in this space, you tend to be aspirational, right? You tend to be like, oh my gosh, like, okay, so right now we have 3,500 viewers. Oh, typically what happens is my viewership ramps up in the card review and then it spikes at launch and then it's just on a fucking downward trajectory until right before the next set comes out. Like, I was barely getting past 2,000 concurrence in the week before I um, did the... Until the week before the next set comes out. Um, but it's really easy to, for instance, go, Oh my gosh, I have 3,500 viewers. Maybe I can get 4,000 viewers. And you think, yeah, 4,000. Your brain starts to mentally lock that as your norm. When it's not, right? When it's not. Or your sub counts. Maybe you have a thousand subs one day. So in your brain, you go, oh my God, I have a thousand subs. If I can keep a thousand subs then, and yada, 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 yada. And I even think it's an error to pin your finances on the average. Like if I'm 4,000 when the set launches in 2,000 before the, uh, or when the set is wrapping. So I'm going to pin in the middle at 3,000. Don't, don't fucking do that. Pin it at the minimum. So, um... Mentally, I set my anchor points very, very, very low um, compared to what I typically get. Like, I don't think I've had a broadcast below 2,000 concurrency in since the year started. Outside of mostly walking, which is a really niche show that I do. I think it was, like, briefly below 2,000 on the day that... Um, on, like, the fourth day of me doing Demon Souls on a Friday when there was another game being launched and... You know, that sort of thing. So, um, I mentally just say, yeah, if, I, if I'm getting above 2,000 viewers, good. I just want to make sure that I keep the minimum high. I'm not trying to make the maximum high. I'm trying to make the minimum high. And so, just to throw out random numbers, if I made uh, $1,000 one month and then 5000 5000 5000 in my head, I'm going, how do I budget to live on 1,000 and 1,000 and 1,000 and 1,000? And then I take all the rest and I fucking dump it in the bank and I don't fuck with it. Um, I saw this mistake with a lot of poker players that I knew where they'd have one month where they'd make 10K. And then they'd have another month where they'd make 10K. And they'd have a third month where they'd make 10K. And in their head, they'd go, I make 10K a month. As opposed to going, okay... What did I do the three months before this? Oh, 2000, 2000, 2000? I should just assume I'm a $2,000 a month person. Um, you chewing on the box? What a good baby. Yeah, chew on the box. Yeah. Get it. Get that box, girl. So I think that that's um, the advice that I would give to someone who has a variable income. I would stress that you try to benchmark your minimum and raise your minimum and have everything be built around the minimum not around the maximum that's it period and of course you are allowed to think for instance if i uh using this poker example of earning two thousand uh, dollars a month in poker then you have some 10k months you don't have to say i am two thousand period you're allowed to say okay i'm like 2500 a month is what i'm going to assume that i can make at least And that's it, right? Like, just, just, just whatever you do, do not fucking be the person who's like, oh, shit, because I knew a guy. <laughs> he had, he was really struggling to even be a profitable player. Like, he was a break-even player. And then he had, like, an insanely hot month. He made, like, 20, 30K. And then the next month, he made 30K flat. And so he, like, put a down payment on some ritzy-ass condo he bought a Porsche and like a $15,000 watch. And then the next month he broke even. And the month after that he broke even. And the next month he lost like five grand and then broke even and then lost five grand. And then like he's a person who was like one, one year after where he had these two months that were amazing. He couldn't sell his car. He, he like, he just lost a, a like he had to sell his $15,000 watch for like a thousand dollars because you know again this is something that i feel kind of 
there's part of your brain that wants to be like, yeah, the dummy got what he deserved. But there's another part which is like, man, when you really see the way that when someone's in a financial bind, all the surrounding parties try to fuck that person as hard as possible, it just makes me feel gross. I've never seen anything that looks more like a predator devouring a helpless prey than when someone who's in a financial bind has to deal with the financial entities around. Because, you know, people, he was trying to sell his car, people just researched into him, discovered that he was in a terrible bind and they offered him like, God, like three, four grand on this car. <laughs> like, thousand dollars on this watch. Which he then used to just pay to terminate the lease on this condo. And he was back to nothing. I was just, it was fucking terrible. I'm getting some details wrong, uh, certainly. But, like, ugh, ugh, my God. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think that, that seeing those kinds of experiences fills me with abject horror that I rarely really even talk about or have the opportunity to share. Partly because I'm pretty happy with what I do, but there's a full awareness that I as a content creator have that I think that every content creator should have, which is people really might not give a shit about me at all in a year or two years. Like, I really like magic. I think magic is really, 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 really fun. What if there is... I'll use Fortnite as an example. Fortnite is a game that I think is magnificently made that I'm just not that interested in playing. Not because it's a bad game, just because it's not my thing. I play I play turn-based games where I can cast huge shit. <laughs> or RTS games where the point of the game is disorganization. That I'm trying to reorganize. Like, I, I, these are the games that I like. Um, when everyone and their grandma was playing Fortnite, I didn't. And if people are interested in, they're playing a lot of Fortnite, so they want to watch a lot of Fortnite, my, my viewership might just... Again, in the same way that I'm talking about Fortnite, it's very possible that people would talk about me the same way. Oh yeah, Daynight, he's great. I'm not interested in the games that he's making content around right now. Um, I'm interested in these. So it could be the case that I'm gone in a year. I will say, I think I've done a pretty goddamn good job being a creator for 12 years. Mmm. Um, but I still think that's it's an important thing to keep in mind. I think it's an important thing to keep in mind. And so for that reason, I plan a lot regarding the future. I plan um, yeah, I plan a lot around the future, do a lot of research into what the trends are, what's happening, all these kinds of things. And uh, and uh, and I fucking lost my train of thought. So there you go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And so I also try to like benchmark about the minimum stuff. Yeah, 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 All right, here we go. We're going on to the next thing. Verdant Mastery. Five and a green. You may pay a little bit instead of paying a lot. Search your library for up to four basic land cards and reveal them. Put one of them onto the battlefield tapped under an opponent's control. If that was paid. Put two of them onto the battlefield. Wait. Wait. Search out four basic land cards. Reveal them. Put one of them onto the battlefield tapped under an opponent's control if the little bit was paid. Put two of them onto the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest in your hand. So... I can pay four to get two basics on the battlefield and one in my hand and one to, to villain which is a little different than migration path which is just put two onto the battlefield so at six it's basically double cultivate so if I run four cultivates all the ramp things and then the crackle card <laughs> I can like Verdant Mastery and all sorts of other nonsense. I, I, I do six mana ramping stuff. And then I need another spell that says put as many lands in your hand onto the battlefield. Okay. One out of five are going to make it work. It's so good. Augmenter Pug Pugilist. Pugilist? Augmenter Pugilist? One and double. 
Oh! 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 What? We're on a multicolor? We're at 146 to 275?